Chairman. I find the right microphone here. Again, this is a request. This is a request by Mr. Flanagan on the property on the corner of James Road and Smith Street. It is currently zoned R1, low density residential, and the request is for PD for a planned development to support 144 unit apartment complex and the necessary amenities to go with them. Comprehensive plan shows this area within the urban service area and a neighborhood activity center character area, which does permit PD zoning. There are no wetlands on the property to speak of, speak of, the full engineering site work, if approved, has not been done at this time. If you recall from the zoning, the property abuts R1 to the north and east, R21 and PD zoning to the south and west. You see the commercial there highlighted in red, and the hatch portion uh, is PD a little farther south, which is a manufactured home community. Those are most of the aspects of this case. This is an overall site plan. What you see here are the four buildings in the middle and then the two on the western side on James Road as the apartment complex is proposed at three stories. The amenities to the north include a multi-purpose leasing office, a community pool, and dog park, as well as some maintenance facilities for the property. This is the upper third of the site with proposed entrances or main entrance, which will be gated. The middle third again, containing mainly just the residents. And then the southern third of the property containing the storm water based on preliminary engineering um, of the site. Brief walk around the neighborhood. We begin here in the southwest corner of the property, looking due east along the approximate property line. Now looking south to the neighboring property. Now southwest across James Street. James Road, I'm sorry due west to a vacant property at the moment. Moving further north along James Road, we look again to the west, to the one house there, and now we're going to look a little more northwest to the Paul Bearer Lodge. Now we will jump across to Smith Street, looking back southeast towards the property, and then begin our trek down Smith Street, looking back towards James. Some of the adjacent properties to the north across Smith Street. This is an approximate 35 foot view taken with drone footage um, last week brought to us by the Regional Commission showing what an approximation of a 35 foot view to the surrounding uh, properties may look like. Moving further east down Smith Street again, you'll notice some of these trees are very close to the right of way, uh, some of them within six feet. Some of the again adjacent properties to the north across Smith Street, <coughs> further down. And then this is the northeast corner of the property looking back towards James Road. The red line there is an approximation of the property lines. Uh, and again, just a further view. We talk about tree protection and buffering. Um, with these cases, PD zoning does require that against residential. We do have things in place. And again, this is just one more look uh, from Smith down uh, one of the adjoining property owners' driveways. Again, the approximate property line, not exact. Here's a 35 foot view again with the drone footage looking to that southeast corner of the adjoining properties. Again, looking due south between the two property owners back there. And then one looking southwest towards James Road. So again, technical review committee did review this request, had no additional objectionable comments. And then in addition to the tree and vegetation protection, as mentioned, buffering is required for PD zoning against residential. Given all that and the fact that the comprehensive plan does support PD zoning, staff is recommending approval of the request. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Dillard? There was there was discussion about that uh, given some of the height um, of these of these buildings, which is why we had the aerial footage shown for what potential views could look like. Uh, the staff did discuss potentially uh, if if the units were lowered to a two-story, which is allowed in R1 now, what that might look like. Again, we didn't feel it was necessary as a condition, uh, but we did have concerns about how this overall development uh, might fit in with this area. Have you got any elevations yet? Uh, no, sir, I do not. Final architectural work has not been provided. This is merely for site and overall uh, density. Yeah, I would echo 
Facing James Road, given the width of James Road being a five lane, uh, the slight distances it with some of the combined existing trees, uh, we felt were, again, okay. We, we did discuss possibly lowering those to two stories, which two story building height is allowed in R1 as is. Uh, so a third story for this type of development, we didn't feel was entirely out of character. We understood that possibly lowering the outer buildings to two stories and making the inner buildings four was an option. We also understand that there are significant costs with four-story buildings compared to a three-story. Um, again, that's up to developer's discretion. But that was something we did discuss but did not feel it was necessary right now to improve uh, or recommend a condition. Dave, how many units we're talking about? 144 units? 144 units, yes, sir. And in addition to that to the storefronts and stuff? There are no storefronts. No storefronts. No, sir. About 350 vehicles in that area. Potentially. Potentially. And the units on James Road were two stories. Three. The three stories. They're also. Three. All, all of the all of the apartment complexes themselves are th proposed at three story units. Does it fit in with the character area of the complex? PD zoning is recommended, as well as higher density housing for neighborhood activity center character areas. I don't know if you compare apples to apples on that, given the nature of commercial could be from eight to five versus a residential. Um, staff did support the commercial zoning in that area as it, it too fit the commercial uh, nature of a neighborhood activity center, which was allowed. Um, I know you guys didn't see a proposal during your meeting about a year ago. Um, it was tabled for about 60 days and a site plan was produced that showed uh, roughly a 50, 60,000 square foot key grocery store on that site. I believe a 40,000 square foot two-story multi-tenant office, um, as well as a, a smaller out parcel coffee shop type structure. So a, a mixture of commercial uses that would also uh, fit a neighborhood activity center character area and provide a different benefits to the community than, than an apartment complex. I think an apartment complex is more practical than um, the planned development, the commercial plan development that was there originally. That, that site plan that I mentioned with those tenants uh, was proposed by the applicant uh, prior to the Board of Commissioners, but was ultimately withdrawn prior to the Board of Commissioners' uh, final vote on it in pursuit of this residential development. The JD, as I remember it, for the, for the commercial aspect, there were a lot of restrictions on what they could have there, right? There was many concerns from the neighbors regarding specific uses, yes. Uh, if you'll recall, the James Road case in the city on the northern end had many of the same concerns uh, regarding specific uses. If, if you'll note, um, back on the surrounding zoning, there is commercial highway zoning already in this area, which by right, someone could go in and develop pretty much anything allowed a commercial highway. There's no conditions upon it, so. Okay. Any, other, any further questions, Commissioner? All right, then I will open the public hearing portion on this case. If there's anyone here this evening who would like to speak in favor of this case, please come forward. State your name and address for the record. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Paul from Paul Architects from Boston, Georgia. I am the uh, architect of record for the uh, for this project for the uh, Flanagan's. Um, I'm here to address any questions that you might have. Um, tonight uh, regarding the plan overall. As was previously stated um, in researching for this project, uh, this project is, as you're aware, a neighborhood activity center, which per the guidelines uh, states that it is specifically uh, to be used for commercial and multi and or multifamily set aside for PD um, or multifamily, which this project itself falls under specifically. Um, there are existing uh, utilities out there um, on James Road that are um, sufficient to serve this size project. Um, it is a five-lane road. Uh, there are 
some further more commercial developments farther down the road there, uh, speaking specifically like a high school and um, other warehouse development businesses that are going up that are along James Road. So um, obviously this is a has been for a very long time a very residential and neighborhood type area uh, of the county, but it is slowly, like the rest of the county, growing and changing. Uh, we feel that this is a project that fits with the comprehensive plan overall and uh, what what is planned to go in this area. Um, as far as this previous specific application, I was not a part of that. I can try and address or answer any questions there. If not, Mr. Flanagan can answer questions as to that. Um, but if you have any specific questions regarding this application, uh, I'm more than glad to answer any. Any questions for Mr. McCall? I'll, I'll approach it if you don't mind. No, no, please. I'll, I'll just, Mr. McCall, I'm just curious. I noticed that, that you saw two or three commissioners are concerned about the height. Do you know if there's any flexibility in the two that face uh, James Road as far as reduction to a two story on those, just so it's just not so tall out there? I'm just curious. <coughs> uh, we can, Mr. Flanagan himself can uh, speak to the actual pro forma on the project itself. Obviously, this being a commercial development. Uh, the numbers have got to make sense. Um, so uh, I know that looking at decreasing some of the heights of some of the buildings has been looked at. Uh, we also went through looking at trying to do some other things like um, creating some of the buildings all as uh, um, single bedroom uh, occupancies because there seems to be a lack of uh, uh, a lot of single bedroom occupancies available in Valdosta and a lot of multifamily housing right now. Um, trying to do a lot of things. Uh, my understanding is we are on the borderline right now trying to make this project go. Of, of number of units and number of tenants overall, trying to cash flow and make sure that this project will go through overall. As I said, Mr. Planning can speak to the actual uh, numbers specifically. But yes, we did look at that. We looked at it. If it is something that absolutely has to be done, that would be a, that would be a question for them. Uh, as far as running the numbers on that and making sure that that would work. But let me say, we are going to do everything we can to try and keep the tree line buffer, the existing tree line buffer around this. Um, and our intention is to try and not go above that three story line. Obviously, and some of you may or may not know, once you get above three stories in a commercial development like this, it drastically increases the cost overall on these buildings and what you have to do in order to meet the fire the life safety codes and fire codes for these buildings. So as far as a possibility of pushing pushing buildings on the interior more towards four story in order to increase them on the outside, again, it, would be, it, it, it affects the, the kind of the numbers on the project, right? Because it, it means that those buildings that go up to four stories vastly cost, cost a lot more than those buildings that we drop. It's not mm -hmm. a full swap. So just by reducing those two on the, on the road, it, it just eliminate eight three-story apartments. What would it would do? Uh, it yes. Would, yes, sir. It would eliminate your, those are the two-story. Those, yeah. those are the three-story, aren't they? They're, they're all three-story. Yes, yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, the, the, uh, these twelve, so I would just imagine four per floor, so it would reduce it by eight total. Yes. So from 144 to 136 units. Yes, those are. Um, which may reduce our cars in, in the 240 range. Yes. So yes. Okay. Correct. <clears throat> what would be the points of ingress and egress? So um, if you notice, we have uh, um, yes. Thank you. Uh, there is a main entrance that is up by the, uh, the what we're calling the multi-purpose building, which is the main uh, leasing office. It's also going to be. It's planned to be. Uh, um, where your overall management housing is, a uh, 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 health facility in there, uh, other gathering spaces for the tenants on site. It would also be the outside access to the fenced and pool area, all of those things, typically like you would see on a, a commercial development like this. Um, site is planned to be fully fenced and gated. Um, and so we have provided a turnaround right there off of Smith and that is one of the reasons that we pushed the entrance instead of the main entrance coming off of James Road itself. We pushed it over onto Smith, one, in order to allow any kind of cars that are stacking coming into the facility overall. It gives a little bit more buffer 
um, and doesn't create such a traffic issue out on James itself. Uh, it also creates a little bit more of a residential feel to the property and it allows us to push the, um, the two-story development pieces of this, the multi-purpose facility and, the, and things like the pool, the things that are more lower down, we push all of that onto Smith Road where it is even more of a residential feel. So that we're trying to create that as a lower down kind of break from the residential community going down Smith Road and then, as you stated, down James where it is much more commercial that would be funded by those three stores. But yes, the main entrance is, is ideally right there off of Smith on the corner. There is a back entrance that's down on the bottom left corner of the site that would be simply uh, an entrance and exit for tenants only. Visitors would not be able to come into that entrance and exit. It's also there for fire access for the, for the site itself. But the idea is that that would be a secondary back entrance to try to <coughs> as much traffic as possible off of that James Road, trying to keep them slowing down traffic anywhere along James and or having to bring in a ACL diesel line. Coming, the main idea is that the traffic coming in and out, yes, will come in, but we're trying to keep it as close to that corner as possible. So we don't bring it, we're not, we're not way down Smith Road. We'd like to keep it out on the front corner as much as possible. Smith, Smith Road, that's a two lane little road. We yes, just sir. backed up Smith Lane all the way back to 84 now. With the traffic and stuff there, that's just a small road. And they're not all going to be coming at the same time. I realize that, but we, we don't need a turn lane or something on Smith if you're going to, you know, we're talking 350 vehicles. Well, it is a it is a uh, traffic light stop there, so that's the idea is that, you know, the. If that would help regulate uh, a good portion of the traffic, <coughs> there is an opportunity to move the to move the entrance down. It would just simply mean shifting it. Um, but again, we're trying to minimize the overall traffic effect on James itself. Trying to the back on the up. Well, but yes, we did we did look at shifting it out on James Road. Well, you know, we got the school there on James Road, and, and um, I went out there and looked at it. We, we got a bank up there. Uh, no, sir. The, the county engineer did not have a concern about the Smith Street um, at this time. Again, this has not been fully engineered, but he had no other comments. Just knowing that the infrastructure provided by James Road uh, would, would receive most of this traffic. How far is the entrance from James Road? I don't have the specific dimension site plan right here in front of me, but we're trying to keep it as far out on the corner as possible so that we minimize it. So, as you can see, Obviously, your, your drive entrance needs to align with overall driveways within the main site overall. So if we didn't place it where we did, it would be even farther down, way out on the outside corner, down near the driveway going into it, somebody's residential property down there, more across from, I believe there's a church out there that sits across that area. Again, trying to stay as far away from that as possible. But again, also trying to take into account, <coughs> trying to minimize the overall effect on James Road because as you said there are there is school there there's a lot of traffic going up and down that road our thinking is uh, cars coming in coming out of there things like that uh, trying to excel or, or decel getting into a turn lane there if you've got if that's your main entrance especially with visitors or things like that coming into a residential development that they're not exactly sure where they're going gives them a little bit more distance for those cars to get off of that main road. It gives us a little bit of a buffer there for them to come in and not completely bog down the traffic out in the middle of the road. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. Thank you. I have one more question, but I'm just curious, did, did, I hear you, mm -hmm. did I hear you say that it's going to be lighted? Like, like, did, I, did I hear that? I just thought I heard it. Yes. Like, like a traffic signal? I believe there was a discussion at some point about as this gets developed, traffic light going in at that point. Correct, and again, based on some of the development, uh, we've seen on the north end of James Road at this point, 
uh, that was been approved, and it's again additional growth from the south end. Uh, GDOT warranting lights at uh, definitely some of these intersections and reconfiguring with more traffic studies going forward. Uh, again, James Road was put in place over 15 years ago to development. Obviously, at that time never came to fruition. We're now seeing it pick back up, so it would be warranted with a traffic study uh, for an additional light for, for safety purposes or traffic purposes at many of these intersections. Thank you, Mr. McCall. Thank you very much. We exhausted the time, uh, so now, um, is there anyone here this evening who would like to speak against this? Please come forward, state your name and address. Good evening. William Morgan, 2181 Smith Street. persons who are directly next to this property, they are here tonight, and I want them to stand up. The first on the north side of this property, just the right. On the north side of this property. Mr. Morgan, if you, if you would like people here tonight that you just mentioned to stand up, let them go ahead and stand up now instead of individually. Okay. All right. If you don't yes, mind, please. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, on the north side, uh, Chester Wright, the Bailey's, Walt Knight, the Payton family, uh, Mr. Uh, Robert Lane and his son Tony, the family Baker, and my family, the Morgan family. Now on the east side, uh, where the Morgan family is, that's hard, right up against this property. Where Mr. Lane is, it's hard, right up against this property. And again, we strongly oppose. Now, these are the citizens of this area. We strongly oppose the rezoning of this property. The second point I want to make, now just stay with me, Moody Air Force Base has a perimeter around it. It has a buffer. In fact, I believe in the last 10 years, 7 to 10 years, the county has purchased more property to enhance that buffer to make sure that there is no encroachment on Moody Air Force Base, and rightly so, for the protection of Moody Air Force Base, for the protection of the person, person, personnel, for the protection of the operation. We have an elementary school, West Side Elementary School, and I, I took the distance this morning, three-tenths of a mile from this property. It takes 20 to 25 seconds from this property that has the application to be rezoned to that elementary school. Now, one of the reasons that Moody has that buffer, again, is for, for protection. Moody Air Force Base can adequately and efficiently and effectively defend itself. But we have West Side Elementary School it already has a buffer there to rezone this property will erode that buffer. We have to think about the safety of the children. And when we talk about children, we're talking about pre-K. We're talking about kindergartens <coughs> right on up to the fifth grade. West Side cannot adequately protect itself. But this commission, they can effectively recommend that we don't erode the buffer, the safety buffer that is already around that school. The third point I want to make, and this is not a civic class, this is not a government 101 class, but I think if you like me, every now and then I need reminding about certain things. The, <clears throat> The number one priority of any government 
any auxiliaries of the government, any subsidiaries of the government, which the Planning Commission is, it's a recommending body, is that we have to protect the people. And not, not only physically, but we have to protect the livelihood. What we are used to in the community, what we've come to know and love about our community. This particular project will, will effectively touch the front yard of the, of the four families that I've just mentioned. Will actually be in our front yard. Now you're talking about uh, something that is going to affect the community and adversely affect those who are in the median area. This project will. And so, it's up to the government, which you are part of, to be able to help keep what we already have, the heritage that we already have. Now just think about this project coming to your house and will be right in your front yard. That's what we are facing. And we say, as a community, we do not want this property to be rezoned. The final thing, I said three, but let me just make a little minute here. The final thing I want to mention is the environmental part of this. There are many families that have deep uh, wells, deep water wells. Now, we can say that this project is not going to affect the deep water wells. It's, it's okay in theory, but in practice, just as, just as sure as that as the digging starts to put the foundation, our water wells are going to be affected. However small, however large, it's going to be affected. Also environmentally, let me just say this. On Sunday afternoons, Saturday afternoons, when it isn't so busy uh, in the area, deer are actually in our front yard. Standing, they're not along, they're walking around, actually in the front yard. Well, as soon as the concrete starts pouring, that's over. And not only deer, squirrels, raccoons, rabbits. And two months ago, um, I thought I saw a um, a beaver. I was a good distance away, but according to what I saw from the back side, now all of this, all of this will be done away And as you, as you make your recommendation, remember the three points that I had mentioned. One, the community does not want it. Two, the children's safety at Westside Elementary School, the teachers, the supporting personnel, all of this is in jeopardy because of the back and forth of the traffic. People walking, and again, it's three-tenths of a mile. It's right down the street. And finally, remember that it is the mandate of a government not only to protect the people physically, but protect our way of life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. We still have a small amount of time. Is there anyone else who would like to speak against this? I have a question. Oh, did you have a question? I did. Oh, yes. I, I appreciate you coming forward and standing for the community. I really do. I'm just curious. I'm going to play devil's advocate mm -hmm. just for a second. I don't want to pin you. Mm -hmm. What do you see ever going on this property right here? Homes that will that single will, family homes, family homes, nice family homes that will not only maintain, but to enhance what we already have. That, that, that uh, ideally, uh, single family homes that will, again, maintain, as well as increase possibly the, 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 the cost, thank you, of the, of the property. I'm just curious. I have a question. Yes, question, absolutely. Um, so you've been here several times in the past year to speak out against projects and mine kind of follows Franklin's. Um, 
spoken out against single family homes, commercial and rental apartments. Is there any project that you would deem acceptable going on change? <coughs> Uh, thank you for that question. We have not opposed single-family homes. We, we, we want the single-family, again, to maintain the uh, property value and then and hopefully just to increase it. But we want to maintain the peace. And one thing, as an aside, one thing that I have come to know, whenever you put um, apartments um, in a particular uh, area, you have to be careful simply because if, if it's not a condo, because those apartments can easily uh, lose their value, and before you know it, you'll have a ghetto on our hands. And we do not. Now we've seen it. So, preferably, the uh, single family homes that will maintain the continuity of the neighborhood that's already there. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to follow up with that. So, Mr. Morgan, under the current zoning, you're aware that they can put multifamily homes there, right? Are you, you are aware of that? Yeah. Um, so, it is possible that if this zoning were, this rezoning were not to go through, that they would put apartments there anyway. They would not be three-story apartments, but they could put multifamily living on that property. Are y'all aware of that? Well, uh, at this at this point, what we'd like to do is we'd like to uh, challenge and just again say, at this point, we do not want this property to be rezoned. And if I remember correctly, you were here in support of single family homes late last year. Is that <coughs> correct? Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, when yeah, it was yeah, okay, yeah, I thought yeah, so. The, the, the single family home is not is, is, that's something that we would welcome again because it will maintain the property value and even these new homes would perhaps just pick up the the value of, of, of our property. But when you start talking about apartments and two and three story, that's not something that we want. Now if if the if the developers and the owners want to go back and revisit this and come back again without the without the chance of having two and three store possibly two and three story apartment buildings, we we've seen what can happen. Commissioner, I don't know if he fully understood what you said. I don't know if not to not to worry your mouth, Mr. Morgan, but Commissioner just said you realize that right now tomorrow if they can start two-story apartments and not, not be questioned. You understand? I think Mr. Morgan's already made that clear. He, he understands that. He simply does not want this result. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. I understand that, but I, I don't know if he yeah. Maybe I wasn't clear, family. right, that with the current zoning, the owner can go out there tomorrow and build, I believe, two-story. Is that right, J.D.? Two-story and high, yes, ma'am. Two-story high, without any change, without having to come back to us at all. He could start tomorrow. Okay. Uh, our primary, uh, just for tonight, yes, our, our primary uh, objective here tonight is not to have this rezoned as it is, as the application Understood. suggests. Understood. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Thank you, Mr. You Mr. Morgan. Very, very early in your presentation. Thank you. Yes, the time has expired uh, for the public hearing portion. Commissioner, any other discussion on this? I'll entertain a motion. I've got a lot of issues, really, and I'm going to take this issues. Number one, three-story buildings, is, in my opinion, is totally out of here. Is this, these are comments, or are you getting a motion? I'm, I'm going to use this as a motion. Right, you're, you're fixing to get a motion, but I'm making uh, <laughs> the basis for my motion. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, three-story buildings.
stop and think about if there's just 100 cars coming out there at one time at 8 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the evening, not even getting to the point of the school situation, but exiting onto Jane, onto Smith Road, if you've been out there and looked at it, we have no right of way, it's very narrow. <coughs> so if you get to that point, if there is a traffic light there, cars is going to be backed up to, to the entrance there, so what's going to happen? They're going to make a right-hand turn and go right down through the road, to the right, down Smith Road, and it's going to start bottlenecking there on 84. If you've been on 84 with the traffic that's there, you're going to have problems there, and I don't think they're going to put a, a, a traffic light there. Uh, past that point, the traffic coming out, if you've been out there looking at the school, and I've observed the school traffic when they go in and out of there, cars are backed up already on James Road going into the school. So being said that, I think the project is totally out of character for the area. I don't know why the engineer uh, on the traffic flow uh, does not see a problem there with common sense. So I make a motion we recommend denial. All right. We have a recommendation of denial. Madam from Chairman, I'll second. second. And a second from Commissioner Grant. All those in favor of the motion to deny, please raise your hand. Tommy, are you, are you saying deny completely or just the three stories? Right on the front. That's what we're looking at right now. It's the three stories. Three, three stories. Okay. Okay. So there's there are several factors. Not really, but your, your motion is to deny as the case is being presented. Yeah, it's being presented right at the present time with the tax code coming out on the Smith program. We have a motion to deny. As presented by staff, and a second. All those in favor of the motion to deny? One, two, three, four, five, six. All against? So, motion to deny is carried. 62, is that correct?